Let's have a look at a dynamic PET CT from the Siemens Quadra. This data set is huge. It is 15 gigabytes. Uh, this is immense for nuclear medicine. Uh, this particular PET here has 62 uh, time points of 645 slices each, so about 40,000 files just for one PET scan. And our multimodality viewer can handle that type of data. So uh, you can see here the CT. Uh, now let's switch it to a bone window level. So here I can use a keyboard shortcut that can be pre-configured uh, to whatever value you like. Uh, I displayed these into this particular type of layout. Again, I have a workflow where I can choose and build uh, customized layouts. And I chose here to display it first in this uh, TCS 3D display. So I can scroll through, obviously. I can look at the MIP. Uh, but here, to make it more interesting, let's go full screen on the MIP. And let's activate the dynamic pet. So as soon as I hit the little play button here, you can see it's going through the 62 different time frames, and you see the corresponding time right beside. And you see that it goes uh, through the different time points nicely. And it's a MIP, so we can add a rotation element to it. And it keeps going through the, uh, the time points as well as it rotates through. So a display like this, uh, looks looks pretty standard in in the sense that you're used to seeing uh, you know PET and CT fused together, uh, but in a MIP like this with a 15 gigabytes uh, data set, um, it's it's a it's a big challenge to to build a software that can handle this. And uh, our multi multi viewer is uh, is powerful enough to handle these uh, these big data sets. Uh, but it is a dynamic pet, so let's go to a nice display here where I can use the data tree to drag and drop whichever data set I want onto my display, which is a nice feature as well. If you have, uh, if you ever build a workflow and you're looking at a, uh, an exam that is, uh, does not fit your, your regular string matching and it's not displayed properly, you can always drag and drop data sets from the data tree onto uh, the display. So here we're looking at the pet dynamic going to different time points. So here I will pause it and let's make some uh, volume of interest so we can have a look at what's happening over time. So here we could do uh, an ellipsoid for example. So here you have all the different icons to create volumes of interest very easily. So ellipsoid I can simply click and drag and now I have uh, a volume of interest and it's calculating the statistics and afterwards let's do a, a single click segmentation so this way to create a volume of interest is based on a SUV threshold everything that fits the threshold is highlighted so here let's select the bladder and let's make a volume of interest so one click with a specific threshold and it creates a nice volume of interest as you can see if i scroll to different slices it creates a nice uh, a nice volume and you can see it uh, 3d rendered uh, on the MIP as well so you see how quickly it calculated the values this value is for the frame the time frame that i'm currently on so if i hit the play button here it will now go through the different time points again and as we're going through the time points you see the values change in the table here live so we're talking about again a 15 gigabytes data set quantified live which is pretty awesome um, now let's go into graph mode same thing here we're looking at mean suv we can go to suv max for example and now the suv max within the volume of interest are shown here in the graph obviously whenever i hit pause 
I can see my values. I could save screen captures of this. Um, I can I can do whatever I want at this point. Uh, and obviously, this is a dynamic pet. So the most interesting portion would be the time activity curve. So this little icon at the bottom here. I click on it, and now I have my nice time activity curve. And as you can see, as it is cycling through the different time points, there's a little star here that keeps moving along the time activity curve. So this is the frame that I'm on currently. If I pause this, I can also use the graph to do a time triangulation. So if I click on any of those time points, it will go to the image that corresponds to it, which is great. Uh, and again, I can play this back and look at its cycle and still have my time activity curve. If I take the volume and I move it around somewhere else, as you can see, it recalculated the time activity curve on the fly. Again, quite, quite powerful. Here I hit pause. I will go back to my statistics table. And what I can do for the frame, if I hit this little plus button, I can also have obviously all the statistics for all the time frames, the reference time, the frame duration, and all the stats are available here. Those statistics can be exported uh, as a TSV file if you're doing research or if you're interested in doing some other uh, graphs with, uh, with these statistics. You can copy paste as well any of these fields or all of them and directly paste them into a, an Excel spreadsheet. So again, in conclusion, our multimodality viewer uh, can handle really big data set and keep all of its functionality. And it's even able to, to do a lot of calculations very quickly and, and live. And this is a beautiful case, as you can see. Thank you.